learning to improvise. When I was uh, in high school, I was just sophomore, I think, and uh, I used to cut through the theater to go to lunch. I was in the drama department, and I considered being an actor and also was thinking about music, but um, I hadn't really been exposed to any jazz yet um, by my junior year, freshman year, I was starting to hear a few cool things, but I was still really more into rock and roll and pop culture uh, music. But, um, so I was really into acting. So I was cutting through the theater this particular day, and uh, in the pit was the piano, of course. That's the place between the stage and the audience. So um, in the pit at the piano was a freshman who was in the jazz band. He was the pianist in the jazz band, and he was playing this amazing groove. I mean, just music, right and left hand going, and just, it was really cool sounding. So as I was walking by, I just stopped and listened, and uh, I, he really didn't even notice I was there for quite a while. But then suddenly he did, he stopped, looked up, and uh, I just said, hey, uh, that sounds really cool, what are you playing? And he said, I'm just making it up. And I think he saw my jaw hit the floor, but I actually said, you're just making it up? Yeah, it's just something I wanted to do. I'm just making it up. Uh, well, there it is. That changed my life. That is how I got into music, right at that moment. I could not get that out of my head. I walked out of the theater, went to lunch, and I had to know, how do you make up music? How do you just make up something? So this started me on the trajectory towards jazz, of course, because that was all improvisation. But then I discovered that classical musicians improvise. And then I discovered that all musicians have always improvised from the beginning. And so I wanted to know not just how to play one style, not just how to improvise in one way, but to play in all styles and to improvise in all kinds of ways. And most of all, my way. What is it that I have to say? What is in here that I want to say? And so I needed to find that out. I needed to discover that. That's how I got started on uh, improvisation. That's how the quest began. And that's how I started playing all the other things, as I said. So along the way, I want to uh, share what I have learned about improvisation, not just jazz, not just classical, not just rock, pop, whatever, but improvisation in general. So you can decide where you want to go with your voice and your individuality. So that's why I have started this series um, in conjunction with some of the other things I'm doing. And so, here we go, continuing on with learning to improvise. Now, in the beginning, this can be difficult, so what you do is you take your thumb and your pinky, and that tells you where the next place in the circle is you're going. It makes it very easy. We're going to go by fifths, so that means this has to be my thumb, this has to be my pinky, we play a major triad.
is, the whole circle. Now, I like to do this little pattern of up, down, up, down, up, down, and then I'll end an octave above where I started. So we start with C here, right hand at middle C, go up to G, down to D, up to A, down to E, up to B, down to F sharp or G flat, up to C sharp, D flat, down to A flat up to E flat, down to B flat, up to F, down to C. that as I play this one, I'm moving to the next one. And that's how you can set your hands up and be ready to go. It takes a little practice and you want to do everything slowly. Now, I've had students come in and, hey, did you do the circle with your major triads? Oh yeah! And they go right on through there and an eighth of the time it might take me to do it and uh, perfect technique too, unlike what I would be doing there because I don't have them that way. And I always have to tell them, okay, well that's really not the point of the exercise. We're trying to train our ear. We're trying to develop sound so that we can start hearing this and feel these and commit these to our hands and our ears. They don't stay committed when you just cram them into muscle memory fast, you know, going fast. They won't be there the same as if you... Because then you can make music with them. started to discover a pattern, hey, and I liked the sound of that, so I kept that going to the ending one. And you can do those things too, but you'll discover things like that by going slowly. So we have them block and we have them broken. Now you can have them broken any way you want. Or you could, you know, do the hand over hand thing. that can be done if you want to the way you want to you can do that any way you want there's a bunch of ways you can discover different ways oh I want to go this way or I want to try to go let down what if I go up this way and down that way or what if I go in contrary motion all of those things are points of discovery you won't even think about those things if you're just trying to get this done and get it out of the way so if you're going to be uh, creating on the fly 
the more command you have over the instrument that you play and the more understanding you have of where everything is and what it sounds like, the better you'll be able to create. And you'll always be able to play something unique every time you play. You won't just have to play the same solo tonight as you played last night. First inversion, major triad. can't see it, but I'm staying very close to the keys. So there's not a lot of movement and a lot of jumping. I'm moving right to the next spot. And then... And you'll also want to notice that I'm going into the wood. I'm going towards the wood. So my hands really always are in this position wherever I'm playing. I'm playing on the white keys playing on the black keys. This is how you get the weaker fingers developed. You want them to have to work as hard as the others, so you have to go in towards the wood. It's counterintuitive. You want to do this when you get in those black keys, because the strong fingers automatically are trying to make things happen. But you want to remember to train your hands to stay out like this so that your weak fingers get the same duty as this. And then you can tell if you're really getting technique or not. You can't tell you're getting technique or not on a B chord if you hit it like this because the weight of that is from your strong fingers and your arm. But when you go in like this and hit it with your hand, you might be using your arm to get there, but that finger is not buckling. It's not... Uh, afraid it's right in there where it needs to be and that's why you use the same fingering all the way through uh, the fingering I'm using on first inversion is this way so I have three I'm sorry I have five three and one in my left hand and one two and five in my right hand that's the same fingering I'm going to do if I'm in G-flat or if I'm in E. Wherever I am, that's the fingering. So if I take A-flat, you can see it's the same fingering in both hands. That consistency trains your hands and helps you develop your ability to play through 12 keys because you start to develop a way that these keys feel. There are lots of ways to change up. As you get more technique, you'll try other fingerings, most definitely. But this is a great way to build on. And again, the same thing with the root positions. I started with both hands the same. Five, three, one, one, three, five. That's what I was using on my D flat or my F sharp, or G flat, or my E. Anywhere I'm playing in the keys, I'm using that fingering for my root positions. So now things have reversed. This is five, two, one, one, three, Five. So I'm going to use that exact fingering everywhere. So my next key is G. Notice it's going to be the same throughout. And I'm going towards the wood. So sometimes I get caught and I want you to see what I'm doing, but I don't want you to do that when you're playing. I want you to be in there like that. When I go to E, really in there towards the wood. I want my hands to look the same all the time. There I'm going towards the wood. And by 
by going slow, you start to hear these things and you notice certain things that feel the same. So, uh, well, I'll finish the circle because here I am at E flat. And then back to C. But then as you do this, you start to notice that C feels the same. A uh, doesn't matter what the inversion is, but this is a second inversion C. It feels like a second inversion F and a second inversion G. And for that matter, on the black keys, it's the same as that. It's kind of the same same with the root positions. C feels like G and F. And it feels like F sharp in the sense that it's all three black keys and this is all three white keys. So you kind of have four of them. One odd one out. But three of them that are feeling exactly the same. And that will happen again with D and A and E. And all of the inversions feel the same. So if I take an E, first inversion, and this is not the fingering I would use, but it's so you can see. Here's our E, and then I can get to my A. It feels the same way. And my D. So there's three of them there. D, A, and E. Okay, that's going to also happen with D flat, A flat, and E flat. So it won't matter what inversion. Here's my E flat. Here's my A flat. And here's my D flat. So this makes it learning easier when you start getting into the 12 keys, you have three, six, nine, and then there's three left. And what are they? Well, we said that G flat, F sharp, feels like C, so that eliminated that one. Now we have two left, and they're the two oddest ones. B flat, black key, two white keys, and B white key, two black keys. Now you can see why I want you to go slow because you're starting to learn your instrument and you're starting to understand where things are. You're starting to see what things look like as well as what they sound like. And you start getting a little less intimidated by 12 key playing or even chromatic playing. our B flat. I'm going to go on down to A because I know where it is now. A flat. What if they're inverted? So this helps you get around the keys. And you're not going to be afraid of them. Those are your major triads. I made a mistake there, and I liked it. So now suddenly, I'm creating.
that's how it happens. You're going slow, you're listening, suddenly you make a mistake and it sounds really pretty and you're composing. Another way to do this is to play all of them at the same time. And you can see the hesitation in my spots. I haven't done this in a while. And I want you to see that because that's how it is in the real world of practice and improvisation. You can't have everything you ever played under your fingers or you would have to practice as soon as you woke up until the time you went to bed and then do it again. It's, you don't try to maintain everything. But you want the sound and you want the location, and that comes from a long time of doing them, and then you abandon that and move to another type of practice, whatever that might be. But for our purposes, we are trying to learn this basic language, so doing them broken, They're ready for the A, but I'm going to go down to A. Here I'll do the E. Now I'll go down here for B. I'll go down for G flat, just so I can stay in the camera range. right here at D flat. I'm going to go down for my A flat. And I'm going to do my E flat right there. And my B flat right there. I could have done them anywhere. I was arbitrarily making a decision based on where I was, where I wanted to go to show you that you can get that up, down, trained in, but then you also want to just change and do whatever you want. And, and then gradually you just start hearing where these things are. So that was completely off the cuff, and you can do things like that too. So that's why we wanted to start with major triads, minor triads, all their inversions, and going by fifths. Now you can go by fourths, and that's, a, that's another way to go, and it's good to do that because then you can play and understand the circle from a different position. But I don't want to confuse you, I want to make sure that you're doing them by fifths for one reason alone today. That's because it's easy to find 
the next chord that you're going to. Even with the inversions, like if I'm on my D triad in my second inversion, here's the one I'm on, and here's the one I'm going to. It just helps your thought process. So then you can practice and develop some ideas doing broken chords or block chords or combining them. You know, even though it sounds simple and you might not want to play it in public, it's what you do in private with these that develops you to the courage and the relaxation to do things in public. What I did uh, too, you can even think of, I just remembered, when I was in high school, I actually um, saw a drummer's book uh, who was in the drum line. And so they have this left, left, right, right thing, these little L and R, and they have them over the notes. I bought a drum book for stick control, and I actually played chords. So like left, left, right, right or right, right, left, left, you know, you could go left, left, right, 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 left, left, or you could go like uh, left, left, right, right. Uh, there's just no end to the possibilities. And you can start doing that with other things. do that from the drum book and then I would hear other musicians doing it and I knew exactly what they were doing I don't know how they got it but that's how I got it